Hello, everybody, and welcome to our monthly Zoom session. I'm grateful for your patience, and today we have even two topics, not one. The first one will be how to focus, and the second one will be the discussion about two icons I promised in Facebook group. I'll talk about these two icons I've shared at the cover story for Zoom, and I'll ask your opinion what you think about the criteria first. So we will be discussing the criteria. And now we'll just start. So I have a feeling that the problem of focusing was mainly my own, because people whom I used to have around for all my life always would seem to be able to focus much better than I do. For all my life, I was struggling to learn how these people do it, and I couldn't, because recently I discovered that probably the direction I was putting all my efforts was wrong. So how I imagined focusing was like this. You snap your fingers, and here you're fully immersed into something, fully dedicated, and nothing may distract you from what you're doing. I knew people who actually did focus like that. And I knew a man who had a large family, little children, and he was writing books. He did it actually in the kitchen, on kitchen table all the time. So he preferred not to go to any studio, but to be here present when everybody was around and he was writing. That was a model I was hoping one day I might arrive to. But the years passing by, I saw it wasn't happening. So I changed my approach. I just tried to understand what was wrong. And I must say, I must say it was a long, long process, not one step change. Actually, the first thing was this. Many years ago, I discovered that the problem was, in fact, that activities like iconography do not allow multitasking. So that's when I started worrying or, I don't know, dreaming about focusing properly. So we can apply jazz or do other technical things parallel to phone conversations or Instagram or anything, but we can't really work as artists if our head is busy with something else. And there is this great temptation to choose a color and then just to apply it thinking of some more interesting, more, I don't attractive things, but this temptation is very difficult because if we do this like activity in the background, there is always a problem. At the end, the job I like trusted my head to perform while thinking about something else was slightly wrong because maybe application technique was wrong. Maybe I was covering the surface with tough color instead of transparent or opposite. Maybe sometimes I was wrong because the way I mixed the color was wrong. So some little issues which were able to happen, they did happen all the time. So that's how I understood. The problem was I was not fully present at the moment of doing this job. So I wanted to see what was the problem and broke this process into smaller pieces. And what I discovered was difficult and at the same simple at the very same time. The main thing that for my activity and for many other activities, we are taught to follow a certain procedure, a certain method, and it's the way to save energy. As we know, our brain burns about 20% of our energy. And when possible, it just switches off like disks or computer monitor, which are not used for the moment. The main problem I discovered for myself was not to hold attention together, but to be simply present and interested in what I was doing. I simply had to find a way to explain to my own brain that what I was doing was worth the energy used for it. The game worth the candle. And to make it happen, I had to find a way to make myself inspired and involved and excited 
so that my brain would agree to be fully involved and to trust this activity to be the main one. That was that simple. Hmm, not sure, but yeah. My brain is any other brain. Living in a multitasking world always wants to switch to autopilot. And I can only keep from switching from my desired activity if I will require this full immersion. And if you are painting a background, stay alert all the time to make every little brush stroke, which may seem mechanical, to feel like it's a cool one. Like every brush stroke matters. Not sure how can this be true, but it really works. And that was part of my life transforming discovery that I shared a couple of months ago. You may remember our Zoom, the time when there's no time. So my results are not constantly good. Sometimes I cannot gather myself together, but it's now much better than it used to be. And I'm sure for some minutes a day, if you train yourself to say like, okay, these, I don't know, three or five minutes a day, I can allow myself to be an artist. I can draw art, can I don't learn the language I was willing to. So to do this creative, to perform this creative activity with a fully immersed understanding of it with full presence, that will help a lot. And after a number of days, you will feel this as a personal development and it will change totally the way you paint. Well, sorry, I've been speaking too much about myself. Forgive me, but now just a short conclusion and we'll move to the pictures very soon. So focusing in prayer or art or any other activities requiring full immersion is not banishing destructing thoughts. It doesn't work. So like, oh, don't think about this, don't think about this. For me, it didn't function. Art is a wonderful example because real art is about magic, not performance and skills. So we may remember Leonardo who would always suggest to look around to watch the clouds, the trees, anything for recognizable forms or to try to draw the particular characteristics of something we would normally use to see as a routine or standard forms. So keep noticing things, stay alert. And then every choice and every brush stroke will matter because it will be done with full alertness to the process. And then it is much easier to notice how image gets more expressive with this dot or with this line or with this, I don't know, eliminated line. Because it's like a poetry and not to have a burden of skills of hours. Skills kill. Just tell your brain that your current work is not a duty, not a hard, I don't know, uh, job, but a journey and an adventure into background, into even boring thing. But then it most likely will accept the invitation and help you to produce something good. I'm sure about it because now I want to move to the second part and we'll see together some images. And I think on the images too, we will see how these things function. So we are not starting with icons, but we start with how icons are prepared. So uh, we start how courses are made because this one was filmed, I think, well, yeah, long time ago. Not sure how much time has passed, but yet what we see here is a preparation, is some kind of order I've tried to give to the brushes. And it may look a pot, like a pattern, but for no reason it may look like a picture. So it's just an occasional set of brushes and other things. And even if we add some light to the same situation, or we start playing with colors, we start painting, and with the light, it seems to be more interesting. And yet we cannot convince anyone that this is a work of art. No, no, it's a process of creating art, not work of art. And even here in Georgia, we have such a wonderful sunlight. It's like something we are enjoying here every day. Well, not almost, not every day, but 
very often, much often, more often than at home. And yet it's a nice picture, but it has nothing to do with art because there are so many details unorganized. They're just set in some order on the table, but doesn't mean visually for me anything except for, oh, how nice routine you're having, Philip. So to make it become a photograph or something uh, we can call a piece, I should say artwork, but some, okay, a piece of something, an organized space, we should have it organized. We should have it maybe like that. So at least, I don't know, there are some relations, some shapes, which seem to have something in common. And I would say, we can probably call this a contemporary piece of art, just to give it some specific um, concept, like this green symbolizes that, and this red is symbolizing this. But in iconography, we don't have to make this kind of effort. We are able to simply borrow or take or enjoy what was given to us by the predecessors. We are given the subject. We are given the story which in our images we are invited to embody, to play, to give a representation or a new interpretation to what was given by those guys. And what does it mean? I would say that the author who created this image is calling us to participate in a journey together with him or her, and we will follow this journey. Like we follow a book, like we follow a sermon, we are invited to hear the words which were set together by someone for us to hear and for us to be accepted as a part of the story. So story is not just the subject who met whom and who did what. Story are the very words with which things are described. And I keep comparing it with poetry because I guess everybody would have some favorite passage from some classical poetry, I don't know, Shakespeare or somewhere else. I took these, I know, two lines from Robert Frost, The Road Not Taken, two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry, I couldn't travel both, and so forth. But again, two most simple lines of most common words, nothing really specific. But the magical way the artist or poet is putting them together makes the whole thing. The words are not nice and pretty, they're routine. And yet together they create something in our imagination and our brain. And that's how it works. We love them because we feel how they work in ourselves. We see composition, we see the colors, how they all are fit together and how they all create a story. In the morning, one of our participants said the good word, consistency. So we see this consistency of performance with a thinking process behind. That was made because, and this was made because. Well, let's see another image of the same type with completely different colors. Like, okay, that was the blue, here we have the brown and many other changes. And yeah, how this brown is connected with this very dark, extremely dark blue. How they all kind of frame the lightness, the delicacy of light or brightest garment of Jesus. So how these different arguments are set together to create this story. Try to or imagine taking out any of these parts, any of the details, and you will see this story failing. Because like, okay, let's see, let's look at the angels on top. And I would say they are probably a bit funny. But without these angels, which are funny, the whole image is dull and boring. It's too simple, too regular without the angels which rejoice on top. So the artists enjoyed the journey and we are influenced by this feeling of enjoyment of the journey. 
I can even say we are infected with, with the love, with the feelings, with the process this artist had producing this image. The prayer and meditation and faith and even childishness, which are radiated from this image, are the things we can capture from this image. Not just lines and subject and amount of gold, no, no, no. We accept it as a possibility to perceive a certain experience through the image. And when we look at this one, we see that artist was driven, I think I will dare to say, driven with the best intentions. So this artist wanted to make faces as tender as possible. This artist has chosen a tender pinkish orange for garment of Christ, the most delicate blue for the Maphorian, and even more delicate for the sleeves of the Mother of God. So I think it will be right to say that everything is extremely nice, lovely, and delicate. Can we say that? But the fact that ingredients are nice does not guarantee that they will produce something good together. Every detail individually, if you analyze it, is nicely done, but it has nothing to do with the neighbor detail, and it says nothing if it's seen in the context of the whole message, of the whole image. What I see is a showcase of candy where each of the pieces is nice, but together they don't create a meal, they remain a candy. And here I can say the same thing. The artist who did this wanted to do a good job doing all the nice and best possible highlights and shadows and sun key or whatever. And I can say this second is probably even nicer than the previous one. And I insist now that I know the criteria. I would also like to hear your opinions, but I would now suggest that the criteria, I guess, I think this artist had was to make everything, or okay, we are two artists, yes, to make everything look as nice as possible. You probably like to argue and I'm happy to hear your thoughts, but that's, again, my personal opinion, and I'm doing it based on what I see. I don't know anything about these artists. I just see what I see, and I compare it with the old ones. So maybe you say something. I'd be happy to hear you. Silence. Deborah? I, I can say what I see. Oh, Olga, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not so experienced or anything. I'm not even a painter, but uh, it seems to me uh, without too long thinking that those two icons, these two icons are too ideal. Every, every line is so perfect so immaculate so it's almost uh, like printed that's the only thing that i see i don't know if, uh, necessarily it is bad or good it's just first impression that's it okay great great deborah you were going to say something and then steven of course sure Oh, Stephen can go. Go ahead, Stephen. This would be easy to look at every day, you know. As a, it's more of a to me. It's a more of work of an art than it is a an icon. What do you mean by that? Interesting point, yes. Please, can you extend it a little bit? When I think of icons, I think of a reflection of life. Uh, the icons I've seen of John the Baptist, 
are not beautiful colors and, and not smooth skin. Um, shows a person that has had a strenuous life. Um, looking at this would be more like a portrait to me than what I envision an icon to to represent and to be. But I don't have a lot of experience, so I shouldn't have a lot of opinion. No, well, I didn't ask you about your academical reviewing no. point yet. We are talking as people who are in numbers coming to different churches and they are not explained what to see and what not to see. Yes, they are given these images to see, to pray with, and they are like not supposed to be much literate. And I, I think I will have some comments later to hear because I was really happy to hear what you said. You mentioned like it's real work of art. They will remember that. Good. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much. Uh, Deborah was next, I guess, and then Al. Sure. I love what you said about the first one being kind of like a candy and and not a full meal, um, and that that just really says it for sure. I love technical excellence. I really do, but I also love children's work where it's just spontaneous and felt. The main thing is the journey. Um, and, and so when you mean the second one, I was told that icons need to be more uh, not realistic. So they're peaceful to look at and they're more of a, a transformed world when things are redeemed. And so there's more stylized, you don't see wrinkles on, on the feet and get distracted by thinking they need cream on their feet or something. It's it's taking you out of this world and putting you into the, the spiritual world. So the thing that I, I think artistically you're talking about is that there's it's too monotone in the first one. It's so flat that there's no uh, flavor or... But the second one, there's dark and light and uh, colors that are kind of not even, not wrestling with each other, but they're all asking for your attention, but it's not in a bad way necessarily. So I love that. Thank you. I, I like to have more, more color on my plate as far as a meal. Um, and the second one has more flavors. Okay, okay, interesting. Yes, yeah, thank you, Allah. That was your <clears throat> you start to uh, use metaphor of the food, but I would like a metaphor of the language. Mm. And uh, uh, for me, uh, sometimes we uh, go to some um, social places like nomination or uh, you have to go somewhere for i don't know um oscar prize uh, yeah something <laughs> like <laughs> not all of us but we have this situation in our life and in one hand it is very beautiful right and uh, some people ask you for interview and you pronounce it a lot of uh, words and they are asking you about this uh um your life or your what are you doing but you understand that this is formal all this beauty all this event this is just formal and uh, you also, we also have different uh, situation when we go somewhere and and we found the person that you didn't know before, and we have so very interesting and deep conversation that sometimes it uh, changes your life. So I just describe you two separate things, and this is formal. And this is very deep. 
this is telling you something about yourself. This conversation changed your life because, the, but words the same. We use the same words. We, we use the same um, tools to speak about different things. So for me, uh, these icons are more formal. They, they have formal beauty than this alive uh, language that can change your life. Like you meet somebody and just in, in some times you recognize that this meeting was very important in your life. And sometimes you see these icons uh, made very roughly or the age uh, made some scratches or not perfect uh, things on the surface. But you look at this and you know that you are changing by this. You cannot be the same person before you see this like you did you was before. And this is totally different. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any more thoughts? I don't know, Martha, even? Uh, sure. Yeah, thank you, Philip. I think they are very nice, but I don't really see too much of a difference between the two other than the first artist uh, seemed to uh, have a lot of gold and the second one is sort of attempted to be a bit more of a more into spiritual uh, uh, realm but um, I don't to me they don't seem to be as much of an icon as say the very first one that you showed on the screen because the first one it's almost like a invitation to be part of uh, this is just very nice but i i kind of i i don't seem to look at it as an icon um other than just a, you know, loving, loving piece of art. Uh, that's just what I see. I don't really know that much, but uh, that's just what I see here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we'll move forward, I guess, and we'll have some more images. And well, my, my desire here is mainly to wake up your ability to think about these things to ask yourself these questions because there can be lots of discussions and we all have from from different points but we can always look at the model and we can always check them because what we see as the model for these two contemporary icons was the Vladimirskaya, mother god of Vladimir, which is maybe one of the most famous icons in the world. But what we know of its origin is only the faces have survived since 12th century. All the rest was painted much later, like 14th century and 17th. So we only can trust these two faces. And there are several people in the scientific world, well, scholars, who say that originally it should look like the icon on the very left. So that should be the prototype or kind of the scheme where we would see the bare uh, feet and legs of baby Jesus. And technically, that would be the prototype for, for all of that. But my main question would be here of a different kind because I'm showing you this version and I just wanted to ask you which of these icons message is closer to the original one and this is the problem because I do not really see any desire to deliver any message in any of these icons I do see what Al has mentioned, the formal approach. So the desire to reproduce 
what you see in front of you and maybe embellish it. So make a better version of the great spiritual treasure. Hmm. Well, I can make a better one. You know, I make a more beautiful Vladimirskaya than this guy in 12th century. He is barbaric. He didn't know well. He didn't have good colors. I can do it better. So I do it such a beautiful blue, beautiful orange, and beautiful everything. And now I'm returning to the words which Stephen has mentioned as the word art, because we very often are told to consider art what looks beautiful or to consider beautiful what is called art. And here is probably the main question of our time, our education for everybody of us, our society, because art is something different. It's what we see here on the right side has nothing to do with art, but with craftsmanship mostly because it's the craftsman who knows what will be happening at the end. And the artist is someone who is searching and trying to find the result. And now I will be showing you another icon on the very left, which was created also in our time, well, more or less about the same, I don't know, 21st century, end of the 20th century, and now I'm asking you again, which of these icons is closer to original? And why would that be happening? The one in the middle or the one on the very left hand side? So what do you think if we put these two for comparison and how we would evaluate these two things? So these couple for evaluation. Any thoughts again? It's not mine. So say anything, whatever you think. Again, we are brainstorming. Yes, it's not to say this artist is a better one than this one, but we are trying to see how our colleagues work in different periods, in different cities, and what they, how, how they do it. And we learn. So we are learning how to do better. So what, that's what we discuss. Oh, this guy did this. I like what he did. I want to like follow him or her. Deborah, I see you switched on your microphone first. Um, I'm I'm questioning which one is is the original. Is it the one on the right? Mm. Yes, yes. Let's let's consider the one on the right to be the oldest and mainly to be the prototype because it also was prototype for the Vladimirskaya, which we used to see, which we used to consider the main, but originally the legs of baby Jesus were not covered. So this part was painted on top later. So let's trust the prototype on the right as the beginning story. So it's the source we can all dig to and consider as something most you know, authentic we can, we can get. And the, the question again, sorry, is what is closest to the original prototype? Yep. Well, you can consider original this one, if you like. I should have put it together as well, sorry. But we can consider the original to be the one on the right. But yeah. my question is about these two icons on the left, in the middle and in the left. I, I did this one, you, you might know. I, I did this one because I love the, um, the connection of the two faces, the tenderness, of the cheeks and the pointing of her hand. And so I think the, the one that's on the very left shows that sweet tenderness, that connection between the two cheeks and the hands. It, it's just so delicate. It focuses well, on that. Technically, it's about the same position. If you it, analyze the position of baby Jesus is like face of baby Jesus and face of the mother of God, it's very tender difference. I'm asking you not about the concrete position. I'm asking about the approach, about what one artist wanted to deliver compared to the other artist who wanted to deliver something and what the means they used. 
what were the means they both utilized and why? Allah, Deborah is thinking, then Allah is talking. Yes? I try. I sure. really try. Um, we all try. <laughs> okay. So what I see in a very left icon is that uh, I see the person who, uh, this is like, uh, the person is not hiding uh, behind the very perfect technique. Uh, he had or she had some thoughts. Uh, and as you told that, inviting journey to the journey i see this journey i see this um not formal but very personal approach and i cannot see that something is uh, uh, not perfect but i see that some tasks uh that uh the artist fulfill uh, it is a little bit different than in a main uh, icon because he tries to describe the same situation, this to transfer the same feelings through this through his or her personality. That's what I see. I see this in different uh, colors. So he doesn't, or she, the artist uh, does not um, use the same pigment. This is not like research to repeat this color to this color. This is not like a printer works. This is totally different. The same message, but with a, a personal approach. Something like that. So that's why when I start to say, <clears throat> I cannot see that artist is uh, um, hidden behind the technique. He makes his own decision and he responsible for his decision to feel, fulfill this task. Okay, any more thoughts? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Allah. Thank you very much. Um, on the right hand side, uh, in the old icon, I see, I see uh, some power, I see transparency, I see sadness in her face, and I... Uh, I also see that there is a sort of invitation. It's not, it doesn't look like it's just about the peace. It looks it's about it just looks like a togetherness sort of um invitation to join uh, but mainly that the, the, you know there is a it's you can just keep looking at it and and trying to you know to figure it out it's uh, it seems to be really to me it just looks really really complex where the newer one, it just looks nice. Uh, more like a piece of art. Loving, okay. loving. But if know, we talk loving. about, yes, Martha, but if you talk about these two images, which are on the left, so the middle one and the one on the very left. Oh, we the are, one on the very, yeah. Yes, we are talking about the two images yeah. produced by one, oh, by different contemporary artists. And we are trying to discuss what were the guidelines these two artists were following, why okay. they would be different and what makes them different. Okay. 
and I, I, I just see more power in one on the right than I see uh, in one on the left. Um, it's a, um, uh, it seems to be, uh, it seems to be not as old as the, as the image on the right. And uh, it's a, uh, um, I, I, I like it. I mean, I, I, I like the feeling that it gives me, but um, But it's different. Uh, it is very it's different. different. It, it is different. Yes, it is different. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, if anybody, I don't know, like to say something. Oh, Olga, yes, yes, I remember. Sorry. Yes, I remember you waved your hand. Yes, please. When I look at the icon at the right hand side, right hand side. Uh, with the with the red aura, um, what what draws my attention first, and as it should be, its face, because uh, it's um, a little bit asymmetrical. It's a little bit more expression on the faces, and when you look at this icon, you immediately look at the faces. You the the other things look like um, on on the second uh, the like on the background right and uh, when you look at uh, the very left hand side uh, not to the same point left hand uh, le on the left hand side icon not to the same point but the same way when you look at it immediately the faces draw your attention. Everything uh, else looks like a little bit um, more or less. Secondary. Yeah. And when you look at the middle icon, uh, you don't, you a uh, kind of, your eye doesn't catch, like goes around, uh, or over the icon and cannot catch something that's really important because like I already said, everything is so ideally ideal. Lines, colors, everything is very ideal. You look at the hands. It's nothing that is um, taking your attention as important thing. That's, that's what I see. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm totally with you. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Can, can um, I just add that? Sure. I like Deborah. I yes, because Deborah. Deborah. Yes. When when I was drawn to this icon, it was just because of that. I don't like doing the folds in icons <laughs> because I learned classical fabric and they make no sense to me. I just struggle with it. So I loved the Virgin of Vladimir, the one, you know, the, the second one, I guess, because I love just the dark the darkness of her clothing that makes her it, it's powerful but it's also receding and what you notice most is the connection of the faces like Olga said that's what I loved about it the focus is really on the connection so thank mm -hmm. you that, that. okay good any more thoughts? Anybody willing to say anything? What I notice also is halo on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty amazing um, uh, together with the rest of the color, um, darkness and light. It's a, it's it's really it's a, it's a lot of power in there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, well, I probably will use this moment to say some words for myself, because that's exactly the moment when we can speak about art, because that's what it really is, how you manage 
how you utilize the visual means which are available to you. Because they all would have some, well, the old one doesn't have gold. It has the, the material, which is, I forgot. Okay, foil, yes. It's a, it was covered with foil. Anyway, they all would have more or less the same colors on their palette. They would be able to do whatever they wanted. And they use these different means differently. So what they achieved was what they were driven towards. And if one of them was driven to this, he or she tried to achieve what was mostly, I don't know, attractive. And it's the moment when we can speak about art and focusing in art. Because in this case, it's what we put to be the engine of our image. How you think, how you decide which color to use. I don't know. I want the most beautiful that. How I decide how many highlights to put. I want most beautiful highlights. But at the end, when you arrive to the result, you see that you've done lots of things. You performed certain number of layers and highlights and everything. And you arrive to result of summary, but this summary is not more than the details you put in it. So when we look at the image on the very left and the image on the very right, we see that these colors, let's take the colors to begin with, are playing with each other. I would say the brown on the old icon plays with the orange on the old icon. Yes, they are of a right consistency, right tonal correspondence, and right brightness. So none of them is too bright, none of them too pale. They're just in a right coincidence, right relationship with each other. Let's remember it has the red, red halo around, okay? But the very color of red is chosen with such a grace and delicacy, not to bother the faces, but to give them particular meaning. And this red, imagine it to be slightly brighter or slightly paler. Everything will fall out, fall down, broken. So this approach of putting together different means of expression, different means which will make your story consistent, trustable, and magic are the ones which we are operating. So you decide like, okay, I want this dark blue. I'm talking about the left icon now. I want this dark blue as the main vehicle of your garment. Good. For this dark blue, what is the main possible partner color to make it look right? And the word beautiful here, not working because it has to be something connectable with it. It has to be a pair, a couple, a specific um, rhythm which you, which you find in one color towards the other. So that is why we can say there is one color which is completely dark, yes, very dark blue. One color which is very, I don't know, dirty, indefinite, which is the upper garment of Jesus. Yes, some grayish, greenish thing. And one color which is totally bright, which is the red, but they all can only work well if their neighbors fit what they are. Imagine the same icon with blue, which is brighter. All falls apart. So imagine some different variety of composition, like shorter figure will have extra space on top, doesn't work. So it happens in this way when you start thinking or rationing like an artist who thinks, how do I compose this hymn so the whole church may use it? I spend time choosing right words. I spend time thinking of the subject of my hymn. So in the beginning, I speak about that. Then I speak about this. And then at the end, I make a conclusion.
conclusion which will, I don't know, glorify God. So it's not a formula which you can just apply as the artist who did the middle icon simply apply. So he made finest lines, most perfect highlights and try to achieve the best result. But best result from, as Allah said, formal point of view. So I'm performing what I'm supposed to perform. I'm executing every little note in your musical, I don't know, script. So I think, I guess, and I'm sure, I should be glorified for being great artist. And this is the problem because every icon is different. Every artist's circumstances are different. And I think it was Deborah who said, or maybe Allah, I may have forgotten everything, that the artist who did the icon very left is not hiding, yes, Allah it was, is not hiding behind the perfect forms. This artist is talking to us. So you ask this artist, please tell me about who you think is mother of God. How should she look like? And this artist tells you, okay, guys, this Sunday, I will tell you what I have gathered from different sources, what I have digested, and what I can suggest you as my meditation of this image. But meditation where every word counts like poetry, which at the end creates a song. So that's how it works. It's a song of this particular artist who was struggling to find the best blue to the best red, to find the best position of her arms and hands, and the best size of the head of baby Jesus to the size of the head of the mother of God, and hundreds of other decisions which now seem to be so simple and evident. So this is it. In the image on the middle, we see no choices, no decisions. We see just performance, like a soldier who is walking and suggests or supposed to show the perfectness of performance. And the one on the left is telling us really a story. And that's the difference. So how to focus is also depending on what you focus on. Because if you are focusing on performance of every single line, I would kill myself. Because like worrying about just line today and another line tomorrow and another line after tomorrow is like doing what kind of job? Is competing with someone or like, what's the purpose of it? Am I decorating a car with perfect stylish details? Or am I creating a work of art? This is the question. And if it's a work of art, it's a poetry where I may not need so much to tell this story, to say this hymn, to write this little poetry, which may in five words, in five lines, contain the whole universe. So if you are writing a poetry, I think it's more interesting to focus because you may be fully aware of what is happening involved in what you are creating in all the square inches of your work and constantly thinking whether everything fits everything or you should change something. Then you can be fully immersed. Otherwise, if your hand is performing and your brain can stay somewhere else, you cannot be focused. Well, you may, if you're well-trained, I know some people are, but I don't know, I wouldn't be able to. So it's a question of what to be focused on. I think this is it. And maybe it's not the best icon in the universe, but it's a work of someone who writes the, his hymn or her hymn with whole seriousness, inherited from predecessors, but sharing personal experience on behalf of the church through art, through how this blue works with this red. And we are amazed with this coincidence in the same way this artist was amazed. We see his or her joy of finding, ah, look how they come together. It's a miracle how these two lines repeat each other. They are echoing each other. They're 
resonating or reinforcing each other. That's how it works. And I think it's simply different from what is a summary of details, which you may suggest as an icon, which actually is not, because it's a repetition of what you were supposed to know, to think of, and to say as a living human, but you are doing it as a printer. So not working. Thank you. Thank you very much.